Tonight's top EU stories from the UNIT website include Aid to Europe Minister Tobias Elwood says Westminster still has power despite EU legal supremacy. Look out, here comes the harmonised European Union car tax. Cleggy and Cameron wave empty pockets, but British payments to Brussels heads for a £100 billion landmark. Plus, feedback about Baroness Ashton's visit to the stands from Brian Barmlin. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the Unit Nightly News. I reported yesterday that David Liddington, UK Minister for Europe, was banging the EU enlargement drum. Today we have this new report about Tobias Elwood, political secretary to Mr Liddington. In this article, he calls for a clear strategy by ministers to engage with the European political process. I think it's worth pointing out that at present Westminster MPs have no mandate from the people to conduct governance outside of Westminster. Interestingly, I wonder if this is related to calls for a referendum on Europe being voiced by Boris Johnson. As always, we'll keep following the trail as the full picture unfolds. The communication by the Commission with regard to removing cross-border obstacles for domestic vehicle taxation. We've got this high in the list in our top 10 section because essentially it outlines the precursory motions to road tax harmonisation on a European-wide level. Expect the biggest ever shake-up in transport policy, including the abolition of vehicle tax, big cuts in fuel duties and a new system of road tolls for every mile travelled. This story is key and as soon as the plenaries start writing legislation we'll bring you the details. As I reported last week, the fiscal fudgery continues to ferment. This article from our UK Impact section looks at talks relating to the Eurozone Fiscal Compact. Don't you just love all this press spin doctoring? What they mean by fiscal compact, fiscal union, monetary harmonisation, is a central bank of Europe with power of governance and supremacy over all the other banks. Funnily enough, they decided to call this bank the European Central Bank. And this article points out that Britain's contribution to Europe will reach £100 billion next year, with the current total being £97 billion. It also identifies the move afoot to shift financial power to the ECB, and whilst Mr Osborne has said that this won't apply to Britain, perhaps he's being a little foolhardy, because if he reads the Lisbon Treaty, he will realise that such safeguards cannot and do not apply. Needless to say, it will be upon Mr Osborne's head that we will be resting our case. Brian Barmlin has been in touch with us via YouTube. Looking into the reports we published about Baroness Ashton's fraternising with the stands, he asks, So, the EU suddenly has interest in Kazakhstan. Why? Their space rocket launch pads? Or their exports, which include oil, ferrous metals, chemicals, machinery, grain, wool, meat and coal. Hmm, I wonder if the Kazakh people know what they're getting into. Well, Brian, the EU does have a requirement for launch pads as the European Space Agency flies its missions from Kazakhstan. However, I believe you have hit the nail right on the head. The problem is the economy of Europe is consumption-led, with an imbalance of too much tertiary activity, i.e. services, and to a lesser degree secondary industry, i.e. manufacturing. Neither of these pursuits can be sustained without the resource output from primary, primary industry like those you just mentioned. Thus, Europe is continuously hunting down cheap sources of primary resources. In short, Brian, yes, that's exactly what the EU is after. You can expect to see the EU pulling out its legalese pencils, just as I reported yesterday with the Moroccan fishing rights. Notice the desire for the EU expansion into the Balkans, as announced by David Liddington and reported here. And watch out for further expansion into North Africa too. There was a lot more to the liberation of Libya than the mainstream press is letting on. Stay tuned and we'll keep you posted. That's all from me at the Unit Nightly News. You can get lots more news stories and information on our website, www.theunit.com. You can get in touch with us there, and we particularly welcome your letters and points of view. You can follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter username is TheEUnit. 
and remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of our regular updates. Finally, of course, you can join me and the rest of the team for interactive discussion and debate on Google Plus at any time. Rick Timmis for the Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon.